in their lives for you on TV They say they're better than you and you agree He says hold my calls from behind those cover crosses Come here boy, there ain't nothing for free Another doctor's bill, a lawyer's bill Another cute cheap thrill, you know you love him If you put him in your will, but Who will save your soul? When it comes to the flowers now Who are, who are, who will save your soul? Who are, who are, who will save your soul? All right, so that's a great question, isn't it? Who will save your soul? So let's look at this comment from Andy Anderson. He says, have you ever read about the great judgment in Revelation 20, verse 11? No one's fate is sealed until that day. All right, so no one's fate is sealed until that day. Now, if we go to Revelation 20, verse 11 in particular, this is... Uh, when John saw the great white throne and him that sat on it, that him is Jesus. Make no mistake about it, it's Jesus. From whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. This is parallel with Matthew 24, verses 29 through 31. All right, and there was found no place for them. This is when the sun is darkened the moon shall not give her light the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken this is judgment day so all you have to do is connect the dots all right very simple now I, it appears to me that at the very least he's got that aspect of it correct in that the fact that it it's judgment day it's the great day of the lord judgment day very clear right now the problem is uh, he says no one's fate is sealed now that's the problem so we we could do it this way seal you'll see that the word seal is not mentioned in verse 11 it's mentioned one time in Revelation 20 it's verse 3 and if you have this seal put upon you you're in big trouble buddy all right <laughs> it's the wrong kind of seal all right because he if you understand he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and satan and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottom of the split and shut him up and set a seal upon him you don't want that seal upon you right now first of all let's do this all right let's go seal day red and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Right now you are sealed. If you have everlasting life right now, how long does it last? It lasts forever. You're sealed. You're secure. You're sanctified. Secure forever. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. So the church has never taught the heretical, heretical doctrine of eternal security. Oh, well, I, yeah, I wonder what church you've been going to, buddy, because Jesus taught it very clearly. We can go to, I think, John 3, verse 36. We can, there's a lot of places we could go to. Right? Oops. I mean, just uh, shall inherit everlasting life. So, and to inherit everlasting life uh, is could be supposed in a future sense, but then he that believes on the Son has everlasting life. Present tense. You can't get around that. Has everlasting life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life. And, I mean, that's, wait, this is even better, isn't it? He that believeth on me has everlasting life. Labor not for the meat which perish, perisheth, 
but for that meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him has God the Father sealed. So he sealed, and we believe in him, so also are we sealed. All right, sealed until unto the day of redemption. And, you know, I mean, we could do this all day, huh? We could do this all day. Let's, no, oh, look, I can't. Let's, let's do it this way. I can't remember verses, so you'll have to bear with me. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. This is when you are saved, you're saved forever. You're never going to thirst again. You're never going to hunger again. If you are saved right now, then you have that water in you, a well of water springing up into everlasting life present tense and uh, it's interesting because this guy is essentially saying he's not saved right now he's not secure right now he doesn't have that wellspring of water that well of water springing up into everlasting life in him right now it's an omission of condemnation right he's admitting that he's not saved all right, so the fast food drive, let's see, the fast food drive through approach of most Christians. Here's a straw man argument regarding salvation and the notion that you can say a 30 second prayer. All right, so I, I, <clears throat> I still have yet to hear anybody uh, preach that sort of gospel. Um, if you could share a link or, or just make a mention of somebody that's doing that. Um, I, it just it's unbelievable how many people are referring to that and then all I see is people preaching believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in fact I, you know I don't see this in the this 30 second prayer thing in the Bible either but the question is directly asked what must I do to be saved that, that very question is asked and the answer is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ right and immediately upon your death enter heaven with the saints and martyrs is the pinnacle of ignorance well first of all the 32nd prayer I don't know where you're getting that from and this idea of uh, entering heaven with the saints as soon as you make that prayer, I, I, I really, man. Uh, <laughs> wow. All right, so let's let's take a look at something here. I have to point to this first, okay? Oh. Oh, what is that verse? Is it? Oh, right there. Huh. But woe unto you scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. For you shut up the kingdom against the kingdom of heaven against men. Isn't that what he's doing? You're not secure, your fate is not sealed, and your prayers don't matter, and you're not going to heaven with the saints and martyrs. You're not saved. Isn't that what he's saying? You shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourself, neither suffer ye that are entering to go in. And that's exactly what's going on right here. Because look, does he, does he give you what the gospel is? Did he tell you how to be saved? No, because he's not going in himself. Right? He's not correcting me or correcting anybody and saying, no, this is how you get saved. 
I love you. I want you to be saved. You're wrong about this. This is the way to be saved. And then give your ridiculous idea of what you think you have to do to be saved. I mean, <laughs> if these guys are honest, they think that you have to obey the law to be saved. That's what they think. You got to be righteous, can't ever sin, and you're if you sin, you're you're gonna lose your salvation, and then therefore you got to repent. <laughs> and it, this is what the argument they give. You can't say a thirty-second prayer and be saved. You got to say, "I repent of my sin," and then you're saved. And it's just re one ridiculous thought after another. So, I want to show something here. If I can find Mr. Goofy. There it is. Mr. Goofy. Um, having a conversation with him. I, you said everyone deals with sin and commits sin every day. You're a liar. <laughs> I'm a liar because this guy, Mr. Goofy, he never sins. It's unbelievable. This guy is perfect, pure as the driven snow. You said I'm sinning. What is the sin that I'm committing? Or did you lie? I right, saw. So, uh, there are actually people that believe they are righteous and that they never sin. If that were true, then you wouldn't need a savior. Now, except your righteousness exceed who the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven and in other words your righteousness is not good enough to save you it's not you need a savior that's the good news is we have a savior it's the Lord Jesus Christ okay now um, so I and the, okay I wanted to read this here Michael Brown says you can't have free will if you don't have a relationship with Jesus if you don't have free will you are bound with Satan until you're saved um, uh, he that sins is a servant or a slave to sin, however you want to look at it. Um, so and that's exactly right. You're bound to sin. If you're a sinner, you're bound to sin. Jesus releases us from that bound, uh, from that bond, if you will. And then now that we are free, if the Son of Man shall make you free, he shall be free indeed. All right, so once you're free, you're secure you are sealed until the day of redemption you're sanctified forever all right so now what you know you often hear these guys say well you gotta you gotta um do this and that what is the what is it that they say um you gotta obey right you gotta obey what is the works of God? That's what I want to take a look at here. If I can find. And then they said unto him. What shall we do? That we might work the works of God. That's a great question. huh? Because isn't that what all these. Um, unsaved devils will tell you. That you got to obey. You got to do this. You got to do that. Well, let's find out what we got to do. Kind of important. Then they said unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. That's the works, that's the work of God, to believe. And could not be more obvious it's always been about faith you could go all the way back 
to Noah, by faith, being warned of God, things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. It's always been about faith. Save your soul after those lies that you told, boy. And who will save your soul if you won't save your soul?